Hello, this is Ken. Welcome to the Virtual Farmer Ken Bob YouTube channel. Today I want to share with you a word that was given to me a few weeks ago while at a prayer meeting at Life Connections Church, where I go to church. While this word is relevant to my life in a very intimate way, I feel like it is something that everyone who is facing any kind of battle in their life could use. Now I'm not going to share this exactly as it was shared to me but I believe the message is still there and is relevant to anyone that is dealing with trials, battles, or any kind of struggle in their life. The scripture for this message can be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 of the King James Version. Uh, however, if you want to read the whole chapter, it is only 18 verses long and there is some insight that leads up to what that final verse tells us. Most of the verses point out that no matter what is going on in our life that seems to look like it will destroy us, we are going to be fine in Jesus' name. Starting off in verse 8, we see that we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. The dictionary gives the following definition for distressed as suffering from anxiety, sorrow, or pain. Yes, we are troubled or have problems in our conflicts because we live in a sinful world and Satan wants to destroy us any way he can, holding nothing back when he attacks us. But because our faith exists in Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we don't have to suffer from anxiety, sorrow, or pain. He's got this. All we need to do is let it go. Our trouble or battle is not against other people. Even though they are playing a part in it, our battle is spiritual and we have no ability to fight it in ourselves. So in the end, or preferably the beginning, we should just turn it over to Jesus anyhow as he's the only one that can fight the battle for us. Let me just remind you, Jesus has a perfect record for winning battles, so completely surrendering it to him secures your victory. When we read on in verse 8, it continues by mentioning that we are perplexed, but not in despair. In short, despair is the complete loss of hope. So, we, so while we might be completely baffled or puzzled with what is going on in our life, or how people are treating us, we do not have to lose our hope. Psalms 31 verse 24 tells all of those that hope in the Lord to be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. In Romans 15, 13, we read, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we start reading in verse 9, it tells us that we are persecuted but not forsaken, which means to be abandoned or deserted. We all probably have an understanding of what being persecuted is, but as a recap, to be persecuted means to be subject to hostility or bad treatment due to race, political, or religious beliefs. But praise the Lord, we know that even in the midst of persecution, we will not be abandoned or deserted by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Psalms 9, verse 10, we see that those who know the Lord's name trust in him because he has never forsaken those who seek him. In Psalms 37, verse 25, David writes that he was young, but now is old, yet he has never seen the righteous forsaken. God loves his children and doesn't want us to live in a state of defeat. Verse 9 goes on to say that we are cast down, but not destroyed. Now, the statement we are cast down is referring to us being depressed or having our spirits lowered, or in other words, to be sad or worried because of something, or being worried or sad because of what's happening in our life. Personally, I always thought it referred to a physical act, basically and literally being thrown down or assaulted in such a manner that it knocked us off our feet. But after doing a little research, I was completely surprised by what the biblical definition, and even a secular definition, said that it meant. So we are sad or worried about the battle we're in, but it will not destroy us or our belief that God is willing and able to get us through our situation. 
To be destroyed, Satan must put an end to us by damaging or attacking us, or damaging or attacking our faith in God. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, King James Version calls it earthen vessels, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. That's found in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, in the Eagle English Standard Version. When we look at 1 Corinthians 2, verse 5, we find that our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So we conclude in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, that the light and momentary troubles that we are facing here are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. The battles we're going through, the religious persecution, the attacks on our families, these are the things we can see in our light and momentary troubles that will one day come to an end and these moments of suffering will be far outweighed by the eternal glory we'll live in for making it through them with Jesus' help. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and remember we are to walk by faith, not by sight. Don't look at what you're dealing with that you don't have any control over anyhow. In John chapter 14, Jesus gave his promise to us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He has gone to prepare for us a place that one day he will come again and take us back to so we can be with him eternally. That, my friend, is our hope and what we need to focus on. Jesus loves us and wants us to be with him for eternity, and he knows while in this life we will face troubles, if we would just keep our focus on him, he will be right there with us through it all and will ultimately make us victorious. Even if that victory comes after this life is over, we can say our momentary troubles here on earth were well worth the eternal glory we will live in for completing this life with Jesus as our focus. Thank you very much for staying with me all the way to the end of this message. May the peace of Jesus be with you as you face your light and momentary moments in this life hand in hand with Him. Until we meet again, have a great day and stay safe out there. Thank you.